This is on Horseshoe Curve outside of Altoona, Pennsylvania. That's Conrail, and he's going up upgrade, and you can see the little dust uh, from the traction sand. This is a this is a single stack train as opposed to that one outside, which is a double stack train. This is also on Conrail, and every time I could con my way into a cab ride through hook or crook, I did, and I will to this day, because there's nothing cooler than riding in the cab of a locomotive. So this is one on Conrail, and we're meeting a train just outside of uh, Altoona. This is at Boone's Creek, uh, just outside Johnson City, and that's Clinchfield number one. Do any of you folks remember that when it ran on to Clinchfield years ago? <clears throat> Apparently too many years ago. <laughs> So this, I think this is around, uh, this is not that long, it's about 78, 78. Uh, it only has two cars for a reason, that's all it could handle. Uh, it just could handle only two cars. This is the Santa train in 1976. Now that's a long train, but you don't realize but the first two cars that look like cars behind here are actually diesel locomotives. And they control those diesel locomotives from the cab of the steam engine. So he could go 60 miles an hour, and all they had to do is maintain enough steam to blow the whistle. It was a nice illusion. And you never turn it down a cab ride. This is inside Clinch Mountain Tunnel uh, a few weeks ago on the Santa train. And uh, I was going through this thing, and I realized, hey, dummy, you've got a digital camera that's got more bells and whistles on it than you can imagine. You can get a shot inside this tunnel if you work at it. So 20 exposures later, that, that one is the one that worked. And so you got the, the, outside of the, the inside of the tunnel, rather, is illuminated, and you get the glow of the engineer's gauge lights. And I, I thought that was pretty cool. I'm not bragging on my own stuff. It just it took 20 shots to get blind squirrels can find nuts, so I got that. <laughs> this is Panola, Virginia. Uh, this is north of Richmond. Uh, when I was working, I'd go to Richmond quite a bit. And I just really got tired of staying in downtown Richmond, so I'd get a cheap motel somewhere around Ashland or somewhere north of there and then get up early in the morning before I had to go into Richmond and take train pictures. And this is around daybreak. Uh, this is a train heading to uh, Washington. This is just outside uh, Kingsport. It's actually in the city limits. This is at Rotherwood, crossing the North Fork of the Holston River. And you know, I couldn't resist. I love human interest shots. This is a Santa train uh, about 20 years ago, and I wonder what happened to this little girl. You know, it's been, been a while, but she was cute as a button, and I, I just thought, that's a great shot. Uh, I took this when I was a senior in high school. That bridge there is, uh, it's called Roaring Branch. It's between Appalachia and Big Stone Gap, and today it's a fantastic walking trail. It's got, it's got, uh, side rails it's just like the creeper trail it's about 1.8 miles and it's very popular i liked it better when they had trains on it but i do i do walk it quite a bit this is on the same trail this is b rock tunnel which uh, folks in appalachia always said it's the shortest railroad tunnel in the world it's 47 feet seven inches long <clears throat> it's not it's very short but it's not the shortest and i've been reluctant to tell them that <laughs> but anyway that's it's a matter of history right and history is important I, I snuck a, a ride with a, a mine run crew out of Kentucky one time and this is taken from the back porch of a, of a caboose and they're backing in to work a, a mine you can see the weather is terrible did not phase me in the least uh, this is Louisville Kentucky that's a passenger train in 1966 and the guy standing on a rail, which by the way is a rule violation, is a, uh, is a guy named C. Hagen Jasbo Thompson. And he was uh, the senior engineer and I found, I kept talking to him and guess where he was from originally? Rose Hill, Virginia. So here he is and he's getting ready to take the northbound Pan American to Cincinnati. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is my sin shot. I was superintendent of Sunday school at Appalachia at the Christian Church and it was they were, they were having classes, and I was just working up the documents for the day, and I heard this train coming, I, and it's not far from the church, so I jumped in the car, drove down there like crazy, made this shot as it went by, and then went back in time to ring a bell and bring everybody in. So I think the Lord forgave me. This got published, and I actually got paid for it. So Lord works in mysterious ways. Times have changed. This is in Corbin, Kentucky in 1965, and I... Uh, put my camera on a barrel and held it and did a time exposure 
Now, if you did that, and I was a teenager, if you did that today, I mean, they would lead you out in shackles and call Homeland Security. And the old guy who came over was in charge of the facility. He said, asked me what I was doing there. I said, well, I'm catching the train at 3 a.m. He said, well, just be careful. So this is another shot at Roaring Branch. This was uh, made a week after I graduated from high school, and I really, really liked that shot, and it's been published a few times. A uh, little steam locomotive. This is uh, nickel plate 765 about three or four years ago on an excursion into Williamson, West Virginia. Uh, you know, once you've been around active steam locomotives, you know, you never really get, get tired of that. You may notice this is a Copper Creek. There's a bridge on, uh, there's a, a train on both bridges. Well, they're stopped. Uh, again, if you, have, if you have friends in the right places, I managed to have train masters on both railroads to work with me to stop the train there and to match them up where I took pictures. This is Copper Creek looking down from a steam locomotive onto a uh, Norfolk Southern train below. In order to get this, I had to grab the grab iron on the locomotive with my right hand and swing out wide and take the shot left-handed. Not, not smart, <laughs> but the shot's great. It worked out. You know, it's the difference between having a great shot and being a greasy spot 170 feet below. Uh, this is shot from inside a tunnel on a, an excursion with the 611 back in the early 80s. I think that's Kimball, West Virginia. There's a, obviously an outside shot, another uh, uh, move. This is the operator inside a tower, an interlocking tower at Hancock, West Virginia. I just thought it was his face kind of etched in the light. I thought that was a nice, this tower's gone, it's demolished, all that's gone. This is another shot at B-Rock uh, coming through. Uh, that's a pan shot of the same locomotive another day uh, west of Big Stone Gap. That's on Copper Creek in 84, and I went up there and a couple of guys from New Jersey had cleared all this foliage so I could get this shot. And uh, so I thanked them and crawled in there and got a shot with them. That's a friend of mine uh, who is the engineer on the Three Rivers Rambler uh, excursion train at Knoxville. And that shot, uh, his name's Scott Ogle. Really, got, really smart guy, really knows steam locomotives. This is a shot that I like because it's just cluttered. This is, uh, this is South Louisville Shops in South Louisville, Kentucky. And it's one of the largest railroad shops in the nation at the time. If you go back there today, you'll be standing in the end zone of Papa John's stadium where the Cardinals play, so it's all gone. I have no idea where that is. <laughs> uh, Bristol's, a, Bristol's a great place to live, but it's a great place to watch trains. It has been for a long time, still is. That's another day with uh, 630, and that, that sign, I'm sure, you know, it's, everybody knows about the sign, but it's iconic, but it's also one of the greatest photo props you've ever seen for a train photo. Uh, this, is an, uh, this is an office car special on the Southern. Friend of mine, couple friend of mine's there doing a restoration of a locomotive in the background. This is at Stearns, Kentucky. This is uh, atop Sherman Hill in Wyoming uh, between Cheyenne and Laramie. This is the route of the original Transcontinental Railroad. Uh, the, the, the weather, that's, that's the way it looked. And if you stay up there for a day, if you don't like the weather, just wait 10 or 15 minutes, and it'll be something different. So that just happened to open up with the storm clouds to the east of me. This is in the Feather River Canyon in California. This is a train eastbound uh, coming up uh, the grade headed to uh, Salt Lake City. You can't tell much about that. That's a moving shot of a, uh, of a truck. By the way, it's called a truck. If you see a set of wheels, it's called a truck. It's the wheels, the frame, the spring, the whole deal is called a truck. So you can remember that. And the JTX, that's the car number, and it's on there in case they have a derailment and the car goes one way and the trucks go another. This is a way to put them back together. Uh, this is at Hubbard Springs, uh, Virginia in the mid-60s. Uh, uh, old wooden caboose and trains that are passing there at uh, uh, one afternoon. Here's a, here's a cab ride when I was working for the railroad. This is at Gate City, Virginia, uh, and this is a train uh, headed to Bulls Gap. Again, I love people shots. This is a conductor throwing a switch at Booty, Virginia, which is a suburb of St. Paul. <laughs>